You know, I love podcasting. I have since 2006, back when you had to use like a Dixie cup with string to make the thing work. And that's why I'm so excited that we recently moved Mysterious Goings On to Anchor FM to record our podcast. I got to tell you, I don't regret it a bit. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Not going to lie to you, when I first heard about Anchor, I was a little dubious because I've been doing it the hard way for so long. But I got to tell you, it's very easy. Use a Stripe account get sponsors, you're not paying monthly hosting fees, the sound quality is great, the distribution is phenomenal. Friends, download the free Anchor app today if you want to start your own podcast or go to anchor.fm to get started. Remember, you heard it here first on Mysterious Goings On. Welcome back to Mysterious Goings On, Chapter 23. I'm your host, J. Alexander Greenwood, and we are talking about Trek with our good friend Mike from Racine. He's at Zufster on Twitter. We're going to wrap up our Trek talk, and I promise, hand hand fully splayed in Vulcan salute uh, to God that we'll stop talking Trek on Mysterious Goings On after this one, at least for a while. But I had so much fun with Mike, thought we'd have him back to finish our discussion about the Star Trek film. So I hope you enjoy it. Love to hear what you think. But for now, away we go. Mr. Data, what kind of cake is this? It is a cellular peptide cake. With met frosting. Which led us into, you know, everybody knows Spock uh, gets rejoined with his soul, so to speak. McCoy is... Katra, rend- come on. Katra, and McCoy <laughs> is rendered McCoy again, and all is right with the world, but they don't have a ship. And ship out of danger? Ship- <laughs> oh, exactly. But th- they're on the HMS Bounty, which is a uh, Klingon bird of prey that they stole from Krug, and because uh, the Enterprise was gone, and then it leads us to Star Trek Four. Uh, the Voyage Home. Thoughts on that movie? Uh, I'd say it's one of the better ones, but you know, I think I think this one is uh, one that a lot of people think is the best. Hmm. Um, yeah, isn't that funny? Because, well, you know, you know, it has that because it has uh, um, it appeals to I think non fans as well. I think it has um, it's huge very appeal. accessible. It's very accessible. And I think that's where why it gets that. It's also very funny. I, I like it a lot. It's, you know, fish out of water stories are always entertaining. And to say it a, a double dumbass on you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, uh, as Kirk would say, getting the hang of the uh, the, the curse words. Uh, that was hilarious. And when Spock uh, puts the neck pinch on the uh, punk on the uh, bus, that's, punk, yeah. that's really great. That's really great. I hate you, I berate you, that song, I remember that. Yeah, I have to confess, I don't love that movie, I know, I don't. I, I find it really, really um, indulgent on their part. And and they're entitled, and that's fine. Yeah. And I think you're totally right, it's very accessible for people who aren't... And I think in. that's what they were going for. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah, and, and so, so, you know, all props. I... I don't enjoy rewatching it though. I think it looks cheesy in so many ways that I just don't care for. It. And I don't 
Catherine Hicks, I thought, overacts through the whole thing, and it really puts me off. I, I'm very easily put off by performance on a, on a movie, I must admit. But Some days you get the bear, and some days the bear gets you. I, I've actually, uh, it was a few years after the movie came out, uh, We went on a, my family went on a vacation to California, and I had an opportunity to go to the Monterey Aquarium where uh, all those uh, scenes George were and filmed. Gracie. Yeah, and we're George, George and Gracie. Gracie and all that, yeah. I, uh, What's uh, like? I've been there, I saw that. It was what, pretty cool. Do they have any, like, signage that says star trek they, they didn't at the time huh. but i mean you could totally recognize the the front the inside the main pool they did some superimposing it's not uh, the emptied pool when they let them go mm-hmm. that's what it really looks like all the time you know when it's full yeah before they uh, that's that's all movie magic oh now yeah. I love this scene where Nimoy is um, doing the uh, mind meld with the with the whale and swimming in there. Oh my god, that is so funny! I think it's great, and it kept the series moving, which leads us to Shatner's directorial debut, Star Trek V. There's nothing about you I find tantalizing. On the contrary, I find you obvious and vulgar. That that movie gets a lot of crap, but it sure does. I enjoy parts of it. <laughs> Uh, parts of it not necessarily them singing we're talking about marshmallows marshmallows that's <laughs> but hilarious. i uh i enjoy uh i enjoy just the interactions between the three of them on the ship i i like when uh they come back um you know after they've uh you know returned to the ship after he was climbing the mountain and they him and uh, uh shatner and uh Nimoy hop on the uh, turbo lift, <laughs> and uh, Chandler goes, "I need a shower." And Sp- Spock just kind of looks over at him and goes, "Yes." <laughs> so perfect. <laughs> that, I don't know why that cracks me up all the time. You know, you totally nailed it though. That movie, if nothing else, it brought back the Trinity's character. The, the way the characters, the three, interacted with each other. I mean, it 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 did a nice job with that, and. Introducing the idea of the Kirk saying, you know, I always know I'll, I'll die alone. And then there's that. And the, the parts I do like about it, and God, if I ever write a John Pilot novel where he has a long lost stepbrother, I'm done, by the way. Because that is the worst trope in the movies or TV. Laughing Vulcan? Y- yeah. Cyborg, the Laughing Vulcan? The Laughing Vulcan. Although that, that initial scene where he rides up on the guy who's got the field full of holes and then he pulls back his hood and he's laughing Vulcan. I mean, it, it does yeah. kind of work, but, but anyway, but, uh, yeah. So yeah, you're sent to left there thinking, what the heck? Yeah. I mean, you're interested, <laughs> right? And then you got, yeah, you absolutely. got Kirk, you know, being macho man and falling off and the, the jet boots don't work. It's just dumb. I, I don't care for the jet boots. Yeah. Yeah. That's just dumb. I, I and get it's a, not filmed the best either. No, um, no. Looks rough. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. And the whole end is, rough but there was budget cuts and he didn't have i mean i don't know if more money would have made it better it would have made the effects a little bit better um but i don't know if it would have made the story um the story was yeah better well the Um, the effects house was not their usual one they couldn't get ilm and so they used kind of a discount effects house i mean the effects are bad anything else anything outside of ilm is kind of a discount house isn't it that's a great point (laughs) it's a really great point but i mean they're just they're just pretty bad there's a germ of an idea in there somewhere. I don't know, but it just didn't seem to gel. So for yeah. me, what works for it are the character moments. The plot does not work. There are some who say, and they do it with a straight face. They don't mean it like it to be smart assy. They they say Star Trek Five is actually a dream. Life is yeah. but a dream, and they are saying it actually is a dream that Kirk has while they're out camping, and it never really happens. There's a lot of people who. Move. I could live with that. I could live with that. I could totally live with that. Couldn't you? I yeah. mean, her, uh, her as fan dance. Uh, you know, Nichelle uh, Nichols oh, is a, a very attractive I forgot woman. About that. But, you know, she was pushing 60 about that time. And that's yeah. Just, oh, yeah, oh. yeah. Now, of course, Spock does another great neck pinch on a horse. That was good and funny. Yeah. They totally waste an incredibly good actor, David Warner, in a nonsense, boring role as the Earth. But you know what? He's going to come back in. Star Trek Six, which is really good. Um, let's, okay, so what else in five though? Um, uh, stupid part, stupid part. The best part of five, though, in my opinion. And then you tell me when Cy- Cybok has this ability, by the way, to help people uh, take their pain out and deal with it. I want my pain. I need my, my pain. pain. 
It's yeah. mine. <laughs> exactly. Kirk Kirk has a great line Kirk. there, you know, and he's like, "What? You want to tell me I should have gone left when I went right? I know that." Well, you know, all that yeah. stuff. But yeah. They go through it and Spock's pain is showing his birth. There is a nice overdub from the late Mark Sarah, uh Mark uh God. He played Sarah. Leonard. Mark Leonard. Mark Leonard. Thank you. And so human. And they they did yeah. that with a lookalike. So Spock's birth was that, but McCoy's. This is the best scene. McCoy whose dad was dying of a rare disease, and he yeah. he relieved him of his suffering by letting him die. He, he took out the life support, and then they found out soon after they found a damn cure. Yeah. I uh, thought DeForest Kelly really did a nice job with that. I really did. Do oh, you, absolutely. Do you think yeah, so? Yeah, he's great. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the best moment, and then and that, that whole that whole... That whole little triptych, that whole scene, and then Shatner's uh, Shatner's Kirk saying, "I want my pain. I need my pain." Like you said, you right. know, the thing that was really offensive to me about that movie, beyond a lot of things, was making Scotty into an ass, hitting Is that his head. The one where he runs into the bulkhead. Yeah, hitting his. <laughs> I know this shit right the back of my bomb. back of my hand. You know, I'm leave it for right. a cheap laugh. You know, well, that's and that's something they do in the new movies, which we get to a little bit is. They make Scotty into a figure of fun, and I don't care for that because I remember Scotty as the dude. Who but at least Simon. There. But at least Simon Pegg is a comedian, and True. there's some. True. I'm not saying it's it's like good, but it's a, somehow because he's a comedian, it's a little more acceptable, maybe. I think so. I think you're right. Um, I, I but I, I, I agree with you. I, yeah, I don't. I don't think he should be the, the butt of the joke. I, I just do. You, you just think back to the original. Especially that it, five. It's a cheap laugh too. I mean, it's not oh. even. If you're going to make him a butt of a joke, make it a good joke. Don't make him just, you know, walking into To be a freaking klutz. Like a dumbass. Well, I mean, I just, because I, I just think back to Scotty, who, he was the guy, when they'd leave him, you know, if Kirk and, and Spock were gone, this, Scotty was in charge, and there was more than one <laughs> right. occasion where Scotty took, you know, pulled their asses out of the fire. Right, and, and right. And he, he was a tough son of a bitch, and you didn't mess with Scotty, and nobody could outdrink him, and then you get him in Star Trek Five, and he's a doddering old idiot, and I was just like, I don't like that. And then they... Yeah. And then the thing where he and Ahura apparently have a thing, and they're eating like yeah, that was kind of like of chips together. Or there something. was nothing to. Uh, I mean, it just kind of all of a sudden was there. Boom. There was no build up to it. Yeah, I mean, um, there was more. There was more chemistry between um, Ahura and uh, Spock in the original series than there was between Ahura and Scotty. I mean, and right. that's not saying anything. <laughs> right, 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 uh, right. So anyway, that bugged me, but. All right, whatever. So five ends with all's well that ends well. Cybox sacrifices himself so they can get away. And speaking of budget, though, had they had more budget, they wouldn't have had this godhead thing they fought. They would have actually had, like, <laughs> rock creatures. Rock monsters, Have yeah. you seen the video of the rock monster that they did make? I don't believe I have. You haven't? I did. Get, no. on, get on YouTube, Star Trek Five. Ro- more what? More. It's on there, YouTube? You're kidding. On, on YouTube, there is <laughs> test footage of the rock monster. <laughs> yeah. And... I don't know. It's it's to me. It's better than you know a, a head shooting flames out of its eyeballs. Right, right. Yeah. But anyway, but did the really <laughs> the tragic thing too is that Shatner about ten years ago went back to Paramount hat in hand and said, "Look, give me a little budget. Let me do a director's the, cut." Yeah, for the special edition. And they wouldn't. They, they were would, like, "No, no." I read something the other day that he kind of kind of apologized for Star Trek Five, like. Recently, I don't think he has to. I mean, it I is either. what it is. It, I, it didn't kill. It didn't kill the show. No, you know, it was kind of like they like. All right, let's get Shatner's out of the way. And we're so far. And we're so far beyond that now, too. Yeah. You know, so who cares at this point? Yeah. So they led. It led to what is arguably, because I'm with you on this one, Mike. I mean, Star Trek Six and Star Trek Two. It's like neck and neck. You catch me on the right day, and Six is my favorite. You know, and Six has got a phenomenal soundtrack.
I, I recommend you uh, checking that out. I, I've had that CD for uh, 25 years. <laughs> i got to get some homework <laughs> and it's, now. It's great, especially the opening, uh, the opening oh, yeah. uh, title credit. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, it's just like, you know, it's building. Dun, 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 you know, it's it's awesome. Well, it, it builds but in yeah, the menace of the, of the Klingons. The Klingon menace is, right. is back. And it's because in, Ch- in Star Trek V, they also committed the sin of making the Klingons laughable. Yeah. Okay, but enough about yeah. five. Sorry. Go back to six, <laughs> where the Klingons yeah, are six again. Yeah, I love, you know, and it obviously paralleled the Iron Curtain coming right. down and the right. Berlin Wall. Right. And, uh, you know, it was very timely, you know, and it was like the uh, the great Spock line <laughs> about the Vulcan proverb that only Nixon, Nixon can, can go, go to go China. To China. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so well done. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that whole scene, that whole scene, you know, uh, uh, with a... Uh, Spock and, and Kirk. Kirk, where they're talking about it, you know, he's like, uh, you know, he, I don't, for, I never forgave him for the death of my son. You know, they're dying. Let them die. Let you them know, die. that's just like that whole, whole back and forth. That's excellent. It's, it's it's excellent. It's intense in its own way. You know, and Shatner, Shatner restrains himself enough where it's not histrionic you know and yeah and and nimoy has to underplay everything but just see you can just see it under the surface it's all in his eyes and uh that yeah so i, th- I thought that was i agree with you i think that was so good and uh, i know that brock peters who played admiral cartwright had a little problem turning admiral cartwright into kind of a racist or homophobic whatever he was not homophobic he was, he was uh, xenophobic. xenophobic thank you he there was, you go he had problems with that yeah I, yeah. yeah yeah i'm not a writer he had some issues with that but i mean but it made sense and they had rene abergenois who went on to be on uh, odo in deep space nine he yeah. played colonel west who was obviously an ollie north character but they cut a lot right. of his stuff out i think and various yeah but it's all there in the uh extended edition which you know, I have, it's clear yeah. that he's the one that was shooting the gun and 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 he tells the president we'll clean their chronometers sir you know yes. and all that and the, oh, yeah yeah yeah, it's, yeah there's <laughs> but we're getting, we got Chang, you know the great christopher Plummer, oscar winner the, uh, bald-headed yeah. uh, eye patch wearing shakespeare spouting uh general for the 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 klingons he's absolutely perfect in that movie you have not experienced shakespeare until you have read him in the original klingon you know, uh, he seems to be having a blast. Cry havoc and let's slip the dogs of war. He seems to be having a freaking blast playing Chang. I'd give real money if he'd shut up. He and here he is. Uh, Shatner asked him to do the part. Shatner, now, you know, they're both Canadian, and Shatner actually understudied for Plummer back in the day, and okay. they, they've known each other forever. And as I recall from what I read, now listeners, if I'm wrong, let me know at a underscore Greenwood on Twitter. But I believe uh, he he asked Plummer. I think probably Shatner made it pretty clear scenery chewing is allowed. Enjoy it, you know, and uh, the whole line about in the original Klingon, Shakespeare in the yep, original Klingon. Yep. And pretty pitch perfect throughout. It's lighted well. Valeris, is a, Kim Cattrall's Valeris is an interesting yep. character. So y- you tell me, if Valeris was supposed to be Savic, did they offer it to one of the... They, they ended up deciding that... Savick was a beloved character, and they couldn't have her do that. Have, have her turn bad? Well, they I, could not do that. That's why they ended up not making it, changing it from Savick to Valeris. Did you see the deleted scene from Star Trek Two that pretty well indicates that Savick and uh, David, Captain Kirk's son, who by the way was killed by Klingons in Star Trek Three, they got it on apparently? Did you see that deleted? scene? I probably have at some point. Yeah. So there was that, <laughs> and then of course she helped the Spock as, in Star Trek Three as he was growing through Ponfar. Right. So you know, she. You're right. She. She had. There was a lot invested. Pardon the joke. Yeah, in and, her. <laughs> and I'm okay. I don't think I would have liked it if she was the 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 bad guy. I think you're right. I, don't know. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. I. I it would have been interesting, but you know what? Actually, it might have, it might have seemed a little obvious had she done that. You know what I mean? Yeah. As from a writing yeah. standpoint, yeah. it would have been like, oh, let's take somebody we all love and turn them in. Well, it's kind of like what the X Files did recently, where they turned Monica Reyes into a basically uh, a Vichy government 
That really pissed me off, by the way. I don't. Oh, that's another but show, wait, isn't uh, it? Do we, do we want to talk about the, the last season of... Uh, yeah, we do, actually. And that's remember, why remember I told you, I have uh, In a Darkness uh, uh, rage over that last episode. We, we are going to have to... I'm going to have to have you back to talk about X-Files. Is that a deal? <laughs> are you interested? you got to come we back. Can, we can do that. We can right, do that. All right. But so, other great things in 6, we got please. Iman as the shapeshifter. Why can't every um, woman be like Iman? And we got the, the the large alien that has its genitals in the front and of its legs its or in its there. knees. Yeah, <laughs> remember that. Uh, uh, um, what else we got? We got a, a good mystery on the ship. It's, it's um, yeah. you know who did it, and there was twists and turns. And you just when you think you found out who did it, you know you didn't. You, you didn't. know, yeah. And uh, you got a blink and you missed it cameo by Christian Slater. Yes. Uh, if, yes. Yes. You do. You got Sulo on on the, the Excelsior. Uh, uh, Excelsior, and she, she'll he fly apart, looks sir. Very, fly her apart, then. He looks excellent uh, as as captain of that ship, oh. and uh, it's great. Um, yeah. yeah, so many good things about that one. I, I, I just like it all. I like it all around. I, you know, I always, you know, the, <laughs> you, you know, uh, Spock always Spock slaps that little uh, tracking device on the back. <laughs> and, and every time I watch it now, I can't. You know, after seeing it the first time, I always see him when he put reaches around and pats him on up. the back. He, he, it's always there, and, and I'm like, always yeah, they. <laughs> they didn't cheat. They didn't cheat. They show it quite clearly. I know, but he... I'm always thinking too. It's like, did nobody notice like a what looks to me like an obvious piece of Velcro that got stuck yeah. on his back? But you know, but you're right because if they made it obvious for a reason, they weren't just. Right. It wasn't. Yeah, these people I, were going to go back and nitpick. Exactly. <laughs> um, I know, and I know what you're saying. A nitpicking Star Trek fan, uh, you've heard everything now. But no. yeah, but so yeah, no, and so this was a great way to end the original series. And they all signed off. Uh, yeah, and you know, if you look in the credits, Michelle Nichols is credited as Uhuru. U H U R U. No. Yes. No. Yes. That Somebody did not do their uh, due diligence to, uh, ch- to to get that. U H U R U. They spelled it wrong. That is so messed up. I got to go look at that. Am I displaying enough. Uh, Oh, nerdy right. tidbits for you. Well, I like it. I was, was going to say, it. I'm glad. Of course, that's the last we'll see of that cast, more or less. And you know, uh, of course, uh, Captain Kirk is going to come back, though. Well, you know, they wanted you know for generations, which was yeah. the bridge between the old or the original cast and the new cast being brought in. Actually, they wanted it to be Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. And I remember yeah. reading Nimoy was like, those lines could have been spoken by any character, and so they were. And, yes, and DeForest Kelly, I think, was ill and was really not. Up I think to so it. at that time. Yeah, he died of, of cancer not too long after that. Yeah, so they have Scotty and, and and Chekhov show up for generations, and yeah, and if you watch it, it's like Chekhov is like going to go down to sick bay and take care of people. It's like, well, that was obviously supposed to be McCoy's thing, mm-hmm. and the. Uh, and I will say and, this, and oh, he's got a hell of a, he's got a hell of a lot of makeup on in his scenes. Oh, <laughs> he is no. it's like caked on. It's caked on. It and, looks and, really bad, and the really bad tube. I mean, he's never had a good tube yeah. anyway. But it was he looked. But that he yeah, totally. Well, and if you there's one good line where Scotty has that Jim, Jimmy doing does a nice it's job. Something wrong with your seat cap? Right, but it could <laughs> you could just hear Nimoy doing it. Better because he would have been right. Spock saying there's some, right. something wrong with your seat cap. But yeah, right. but and, Dewan does a great. And job. that was that movie was great too because it gave us the Enterprise B. The last, I mean, we'd seen C in right. uh, Next Generation's Yesterday's Enterprise. It gave us Enterprise B, uh, captain by uh, Cameron. Yes, from, or uh, from Ferris Bueller. <laughs> Ferris Alan, Bueller's, Rugg, Alan Rugg. Alan Rugg, who um, is just you're just sitting there going, you know, who's his dad that he got a captaincy? Because this guy does not seem. I mean, I'm being a little rough on it. It doesn't help that everything was going to be installed next Tuesday. On Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's true. You know, a lot of it's a soft launch. I mean, it wasn't supposed to be yeah. a rescue mission. It's just like a right. spin around the block, you know. But remember the reporters with their little headgear yeah. and the cheesy flashlights? Th- that just yep. looked ridiculous. Yeah, there were so many cheesy aspects. This will put a nice bow on this discussion because it's the end of yeah. Kirk. So I was going to say, let me if, you wanna you ra- if you want to do the rest of them, in another podcast, I'm I'm game for that. I think we or should bring you back. St- Destruct sequence completed and engaged. Yeah. Kirk's death in Generations. <sighs> kind of went out like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Talk about a bridge to the next generation. You know, uh, his initial there's de- better ways he could have gone. There's his, better ways he could have gone. His initial death before when he went into the Nexus, that would have been okay. That, yeah, because he, he died... Uh, Alone and on a ship. Saving, saving the ship, yeah. Right. Um, the second death was like, well, okay, we got to kill him off. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to do this? Right. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know how that. I mean, I don't know what would have been a better way, but uh. I just always saw him before this movie. I always, I always saw him in the chair. Well, you know how I saw him go. I saw him go the way George Kirk went in Star Trek: The Reboot. I, I saw him going like that in the captain's chair, saving yeah. everyone else, like cut, giving them cover. That's how I saw him go, not punching out. Alex from Clockwork Orange um, on a rickety old metallic bridge. I like Michael McDowell. You know, that, that, the, I the, story of, the story of Generations is kind of weak, too, because ultimately, um, you know how Guinan's in the Nexus yeah. to help out um, right, right. Picard? Well, you know, so was Soren. I mean, they were both on the same ship right. that put him in there. So, I mean, in a sense, he's already there. There's a lot of holes in that, and Ronald D. Moore <laughs> co-wrote this. And so, in fact, he goes back in a second time there, really. You know, right. so it's like, well, once you're in, you're in. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't know that the bad guy's lost, really. And and <laughs> how, even, even, yeah, exactly. Know. And how come, how come Picard like could just say, "I don't want to be here and get out." Right. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of holes. The crashing of the ship was amazing, though. Got to admit, um, when it hit, uh, um, Lursa and Bator were. Oh yeah. Amusing, I guess. I, I like it when 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 he Malcolm McDowell would wave like a, a hand in front of their breath because they 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 stink so bad with their breath. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Initiating uh, a data, mating ritual. <laughs> data uh, enter uh, uh, utters the immortal line. Oh shit! That was good. <laughs> Although that the emotion chip though, and the life forms. Did he? Oh, that. Mm. With the life forms. It did. It did not work for me. Where? Yeah. You. Yeah, it didn't. I Brent Spiner. We'll have to get into this next time. Brent Spiner to me is, I like him, but I think he can really needs to be reined in a little bit. And <laughs> if he's not reined in, you're gonna get. Well, just watch Data Lore and and yes, but he's excellent in First Contact. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, that <laughs> that would be the best TNG movie. Would it? Would it? Or would it not? to you i would say yeah i mean what would you what, what would you put up against well, nemesis, not insurrection <laughs> <laughs> it's nemesis is better than insurrection nemesis is better than star trek in a darkness and nemesis also rips off wrath of Khan. yes but it does it better and i think you know what for our next well, it's not so blatant it's not so blatant it's not it's not it's layered and um, you know what when we get into the next you know we should talk about how Nemesis, I think, kind of gets a shitty rap compared to Insurrection, it especially. Does. It does. Yeah, it does. Tom Hardy. <laughs> you got Tom Hardy. I mean, come on. Yeah, before he was famous. Bane, for God's good. sakes. That, and you could understand him. <laughs> I am Gotham's rectum. Whatever he says, I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, Mike, this has been a... This has flown by. I am amazing, I know. You are. This is fun. <laughs> I'm having a great time. Goodbye, Jean-Luc. I'm going to miss you. You had such potential. But then again, all good things must come to an end. I'll tell you what, I'd really like to have you back. Um, Absolutely. Uh, we'll talk more off air. And uh, yeah. if uh, people kind of want to interact with you and challenge your opinions or pat you on the back, uh, is Twitter the best way to find you? Uh, Twitter's probably the, yeah, I'd say so. Ed Zuster, Z or Z. If you're Canadian, <laughs> O O F S T E R. Yeah, Jason McIntyre, that would be for you. The Z. Yes, Jason. He's. I. I always. I enjoy your podcast, and Jason is uh, one of my favorite guests you've had on. I know he's been on a couple times, at least two or three, right? Yeah, he's. He's just. A he, blast. He's excellent. I haven't gotten his. I got so many books to read, but I'm. I'm that Dovetail Cove. It, it's. It's calling to me. I can hear it. Dude, I, I've, I've not read all of the Dovetail Coves, but I've read several. And Are they all out, or is it just a few of them right he's now? He's just now putting the, the bow on the last one, and but uh, I don't know if they're all out. Ooh, now you called me out, and he's like a buddy of mine. 
Tell you what, we'll have him on soon to talk about it. Give us an update <laughs> on that. But, but man, he'll be thrilled to hear that you that, that you may be uh, maybe on the edge of being a fan. And uh, yeah, I love having him on the show. He's a great guy, and you're a great guy. And again, again, one more time, Twitter. You are at Z at Zoofster Z O O F S T E R. Okay, I love your feed because you have great info on sci-fi and pop culture and sometimes just irreverent funny <laughs> shit and it's really great uh, thank you, you you have honored us you've honored me and and sincerely i'm i'm not pandering at all i mean i've already gotten an hour of material out of you so i could just say farewell but i would i want to thank you again for being a reader of the john pilot mysteries and for being a supporter hey, no it, well, thanks for writing good books, because uh, God, it would suck if, <laughs> if I plug it through them and they suck, you know, but no, thanks for writing good stuff. I appreciate that. Oh, my brother. Thank you. And All I know right. next time I come back, you're going to have a, a firm date for me on the next one. Uh, I'll make that deal with you. I'll have a firm <laughs> date for you. Um, if you want to, uh, of course, if you want to catch up with me, I'm on Twitter at A underscore Greenwood, just like it sounds. Um, don't forget the mothership at pilotscross.com. That's P-I-L-A-T-E-S. C R O S S dot com. Yeah, I know. I should have thought it out before I bought the URL. That's the mothership. I'm also on Facebook at John Pilot Mysteries, and that's John, like typical spelling, Pilot P I L A T E, the Roman governor who washed his hands of something really not very nice. That is going to do it for Mysterious Goings On with our good friend Mike from Racine, Wisconsin. Shout out to him land. and his all his friends at Tangled Hickory. A shout out. They're not in Racine, but thank you. They're in they're in uh, Viroqua, which is by Wisconsin Dells. It's a great wine bar. My best friend runs it. Tangled Hickory. It, if you're in the area, <laughs> stop in. Tell Mike sent you, and they'll take good care of you. Or shoot me something at uh, on Twitter, and uh, maybe I can hook you up with a deal there. Yeah, just say uh, I'm a listener to Mysterious Goings On. But here's the deal: if I head that direction, you and I, my brother, are going to get together. Now, you do know I drink copious amounts of alcohol when I get together, so you're just going to have to... Uh, that's okay. I've been known to drink copious amounts of alcohol <laughs> pretty much every time I go up there. Well... I it, make her drive me home. I make her drive me home because I... That way I have no responsibility. She's a great She's a great pal. I'll give you that, man. Um, well, Mike, it's been a pleasure. I could go on forever. Thanks again, and to you listeners, thanks for joining us. I hope you'll check our back catalog, and if you're enjoying what you're hearing... A review on iTunes makes a huge difference, and I'll just tell you why real quick. You may know that when this show was initially launched, we were named a new and noteworthy podcast. We Our downloads went through the roof. That fades out. They stop putting you on that list, and then after that, iTunes basically says sink or swim on your own, and the way they judge that is on do you have reviews and lots of them. So if you want this show to do better and to get more listeners and get more reviews, we need you five or six listeners who regularly download this up this show to uh, leave a review on iTunes. If you have any questions about it, let me know. Again, I am Jay Alexander Greenwood. This has been Mike from Racine, one of my, my favorites, favorite guests on the show. And until next time, keep reading. Space, the final frontier. These are the continuing voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Her ongoing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life forms and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. It's a great time to get a great deal on a new car when you get approved for an auto loan from PenFed. Our powered by True Car rates are as low as 1.39% APR on new vehicles. Finance for a longer term to lower your monthly bill. Plus, take up to 60 days to schedule your first payment. Join PenFed and together we'll keep you moving forward. Anyone can apply. Visit PenFed.org slash auto or call 1-800-247-5626. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. From regular expenses to occasional splurges, there's a lot to buy. Why not get cash back every time you spend? With the PenFed Power Cash Rewards Card, you get cash back on every purchase. That's everywhere, every time you use it. You can even earn a $100 statement credit when you spend $1,500 in the first 90 days. Visit PenFed.org slash PowerCash to apply. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. 